I'm Michael Smolens, and thanks for joining me on my video tutorial series for the jazz classic Killer Joe. I was introduced to this Benny Golson song through Quincy Jones' Walking in Space recording back in 1969. Golson wrote it a decade earlier, and it's appeared on over 60 different CDs. We're going to be covering a wide range of topics on Killer Joe, from soloing and accompanying, or comping as it's usually called, to playing the melody in different ways and even reharmonizing it. The recording you just heard was my rearrangement in a duo format. This video will cover a series of basic left hand voicings for the opening of the solo section. Let's begin. There are two kinds of voicings for the left hand. One is called rooted, which means that the root of the chord is in the bass, or the lowest note sounding. And the other is called rootless, where something other than the root is in the bass. They both have their function, but we're going to separate them now so that you can get a better idea of how to make this easier for your hands to play. Root and seventh, root and seventh. The beginning of Killer Joe just goes back and forth between C7 or later C13 and B flat seven or B flat 13. The easiest thing that you can do is just play the root and the seventh, and that'll convey the bluesy sound of the piece. To the right of the chord are the numbers that will describe what interval is happening, and then below it is the fingering the highest finger first, and the thumb being one, the pinky being five. So for many people who are more advanced, taking a look at just two notes might seem silly, but what if your hand's really tired, or you're getting over an injury, or piano is a brand new instrument for you? Two notes would, might be just all that you can handle. So that's why I included it in this series. Okay, the next one is filling in the sonority with a third between the root and the seventh. In the beginning, it is really helpful to have the bass in your hand so you can really hear it for yourself. Now we're going to move into another category called rootless voicings. This chord begins with the third on the bottom, going three, flat seven, nine. And you just move that down a whole step, three, flat seven, nine. And they go back and forth, the same fingering, very convenient. going to actually back up to a previous chord where you had root, third, and seventh. Check out the last chord on that line, B flat seven. You may want to play it like this, one, four, five, or one, three, five. That really depends on what's more comfortable for your hand. I think it's time now to do the splat test which is a way for you to determine what kind of spacing you have between each finger. So you just lower the piano lid, take your hand, and splat. And there it is. I have more spacing, naturally, between my fourth and fifth fingers. And so with piano, we're talking about the thumb, second, third, fourth, fifth. On the page, it'll be some kind of number, one, two, three, four, five. Between my fourth and fifth, I have more space. For many people, it's not the case. And it tends to be the same for both hands. Let's take a look at my right hand. There it is. Lots of space between my fourth and fifth finger. And again, it doesn't matter if it's left or right hand. It's still one, two, three, four, five. So the amount of spacing you have between each finger naturally, as well as the length of your fingers, will determine what fingering is most comfortable for any given chord. 
Let's pick up for our next set of rootless voicings. This now includes four notes, and so we're going beyond a seventh, beyond a ninth, we're going into thirteenth chords. So there's our three, thirteen, flat seven, nine, and the same thing a whole step lower. And together it sounds like. Everything parallel. All of the voicings for this particular video are about parallel pairs of voicings. The last voicing, we're going to cover an advanced form of rooted chords. And uh, this is basically for an intermediate or advanced level player. Root, three, 13, flat seven. And so you have an unusually wide stretch between your fourth finger and your second finger. Some people find it more comfortable to do it one, rather five, four, two, one. But my hand isn't that big, so I find that this fingering is more comfortable. And then you do the same interval construction a whole step lower. And also I have an alternate fingering here. Uh, my first choice for this is five, four, two, one. You can also do five, four, one, two, whatever's more comfortable. But this is unusual because it includes the root and the 13 along with the third and flat seven. It's not a commonly done voicing, but it's very good for getting your ear to hear the root on a 13th chord with just one hand. And it sounds like this. Now that I've described different types of parallel chord combinations, we're going to play them with bass accompaniment. And thanks to my digital looper, I'll just be able to hit a button and we'll have instant repeating bass. Here's the first chord. students. And now our rootless chords. like what's missing doesn't seem to swing so when you swing it's crisper the second event happens 
later than what's written. swing swing now you have a variety of options for working with the beginning of soloing on Killer Joe C13 to B flat 13 using parallel pairs of chords I'm Michael Smolens and you can find out more about my teaching other video tutorials as well as articles at secondsightmusic.com look at the teaching link as well as on Facebook, you'll find Second Sight Music Studios. Thanks.